terror in London's fog. The legacy of Jack the Ripper, a name that has become synonymous with fear and mystery, Jack the Ripper. The name sends shivers down spines. It evokes images of dark alleys and shadowy figures. He's a ghost story, a nightmare figure, a symbol of the unknown and the terrifying. In 1888, London trembled as the Ripper stalked the Whitechapel district. The streets were filled with an air of dread. He brutally murdered five women, then vanished. His crimes were not just murders, they were acts of unspeakable horror. But the fear? That never left. It lingered in the hearts and minds of the people. The Ripper's crimes were savage. He targeted vulnerable women, prostitutes, women who were already marginalized by society. He left them mutilated, their bodies a gruesome spectacle. Newspapers devoured the story. The public's morbid curiosity was insatiable. The public was both horrified and captivated. The mystery of his identity only added to the allure. Over a century later, Jack the Ripper still fascinates us. His story has been retold countless times in books, films and tours. He represents the darkness that lurks beneath the surface, the hidden dangers that can exist in any society. Jack reminds us that even in bustling cities, monsters can hide. They can blend in unnoticed until they strike. He is a puzzle unsolved, a mystery that continues to grip our imaginations. Theories abound. But the truth remains elusive. But who was Jack the Ripper? Was he a deranged lunatic or a calculated killer? Was he a gentleman killer, hiding in plain sight, someone who moved in high society circles or a butcher driven by madness? The mystery endures. Each theory brings its own set of questions. This is the story of Jack the Ripper, his victims and the city he terrorized. A tale that continues to haunt and intrigue us to this day. The shadowed streets, unveiling the victims of Jack the Ripper. The dark alleys and foggy nights of Victorian London set the stage for one of history's most infamous serial killers. The Ripper's victims were women, often marginalized and living in dire poverty. They lived and worked in the shadows of London's East End, a place teeming with hardship and struggle. They were mothers, daughters, sisters and friends, each with their own stories and dreams. Their names were Mary Ann Nichols, Annie Chapman, Elizabeth Stride, Catherine Eddowes, and Mary Jane Kelly. These women, now known as the Canonical Five, were forever etched into history. Mary Ann Nichols was the first. She was a mother of five, struggling to make ends meet. She was found murdered on August 31st, 1888, her body discovered in a darkened street. Her throat had been slashed and her abdomen mutilated in a manner that shocked the community. The brutality shocked even the most hardened police officers, setting off a wave of fear and panic. Annie Chapman was next. She was a widow, trying to survive in the harsh conditions of the East End. Her body was discovered on September 8th, in the early hours of the morning. Her throat was also cut, and her abdomen was laid open, revealing the killer's increasing savagery. The killer was becoming bolder, more brazen, leaving a trail of terror in his wake. Elizabeth Stride and Catherine Eddowes were killed on the same night, September 30th. Stride's throat was cut, but her body was otherwise untouched, possibly interrupted. Eddowes suffered an even more gruesome fate. Her body was horrifically mutilated with her face disfigured beyond recognition. The double murder sent shockwaves through the city, heightening the sense of dread and urgency. The final victim, Mary Jane Kelly, was found on November 9th. She was the youngest and perhaps the most tragic of the victims. Her murder was the most savage, with her body almost unrecognizable due to the extent of the mutilation. The Ripper had saved his most brutal act for last, leaving a scene of unimaginable horror. These five women were more than just victims. They were human beings with their own lives and stories. They had lives, loves and losses, and their deaths left a void in the lives of those who knew them. The Ripper took all that away, but in death, they became symbols of the forgotten and the vulnerable. Their tragic ends serve as a stark reminder of the dangers faced by women in the shadows of society. They represented the forgotten and the vulnerable, and their stories continue to resonate to this day. As we remember them, we honor their lives and acknowledge the harsh realities they faced. The story of Jack the Ripper is not just about the killer, 
but also about the lives he destroyed and the enduring legacy of his victims. Whispers in the dark, the prime suspects. The mystery of Jack the Ripper is fueled by the suspects. Over the years, over 100 names have been put forward, but some stand out more than others. Uh, Montague John Druitt was a barrister. He committed suicide shortly after the final murder. Some believe the guilt became too much. Others dismiss this theory. Aaron Kosminski was a Polish immigrant. He lived in Whitechapel. He was admitted to an asylum suffering from paranoid schizophrenia. Could he have been the Ripper? Walter Sickert was a famous painter. He had a fascination with the Ripper case. Some believe his paintings contain clues. But is it fact or just artistic license? These are just a few of the many suspects, each with their own story, each with their own connection to the case. But the truth remains elusive. Was Jack one of these men or was he someone else entirely? Section four, policing the shadows, how Jack the Ripper changed law enforcement. The Ripper case shocked London. It exposed the failings of the police force. The East End was a dangerous place, overcrowded, poorly lit. It was a haven for criminals. The police were overwhelmed. They lacked the resources and manpower. They struggled to gather evidence. They were also hampered by the media frenzy. But the Ripper case forced change. It highlighted the need for better policing. It led to the creation of dedicated murder squads. These detectives were trained in new techniques. The Ripper case also saw the introduction of criminal profiling. Doctors tried to understand the killer's mind. They studied the crime scenes. They analyzed the Ripper's letters. This marked the beginning of criminal psychology. Section five, scars on the city, London, after Jack. The Ripper's reign of terror was short, but his impact on London was profound. The city felt vulnerable. The East End, once bustling, became shrouded in fear. People were afraid to walk the streets at night. Women especially felt unsafe. The murders exposed the dark underbelly of Victorian society. They highlighted the plight of the poor and vulnerable. The Ripper case also damaged London's reputation. The city was seen as a dangerous place. Tourism suffered. People questioned the authorities' ability to keep them safe. But the city eventually recovered. The police made improvements. The streets became safer. But the memory of Jack the Ripper lingered. It became a cautionary tale, a reminder of the darkness that can lurk in the shadows. Section six, a grisly inspiration, copycats and crime fighters. The Ripper's crime shocked the world. Some were horrified, others were inspired. The Ripper became a macabre celebrity. His crimes, a blueprint for copycats. In the years that followed, several killers claimed the Ripper's mantle. They wrote letters, they mimicked his methods. They craved the same notoriety, but the Ripper's legacy also inspired law enforcement. His crimes highlighted the need for forensic science, for better investigative techniques, for understanding the criminal mind. The Ripper case, though horrific, advanced the field of criminology. It forced police to adapt, to develop new ways to catch killers. In a way, Jack the Ripper, the monster, inadvertently helped to make the world a little bit safer. Section 7. The Enduring Enigma. Why Jack the Ripper still haunts us. Over a century has passed since Jack the Ripper stalked the streets of London. The cobblestone paths and gaslit alleys of Whitechapel have long since changed but the shadow of the Ripper still looms large, yet he continues to fascinate us. His name evokes a chilling curiosity, a blend of fear and intrigue that has persisted through generations. Why? What is it about this case that still grips our imaginations? Perhaps it's the mystery, the allure of an enigma that has never been unraveled, the fact that he was never caught. The idea that someone could commit such heinous acts and simply vanish into the foggy night is both terrifying and captivating. We are drawn to unsolved puzzles. We crave closure. The human mind seeks answers, and the Ripper case offers none. And the Ripper case offers none. Each clue, each theory, only deepens the mystery. Or maybe it's the brutality of the crimes. The sheer savagery of the murders shocks us to our core. The sheer savagery of the murders shocks us. The Ripper's victims were not just killed, 
They were mutilated in ways that defy comprehension. It forces us to confront the dark side of human nature. The Ripper's actions compel us to look into the abyss of human depravity. But perhaps the most likely reason is that Jack the Ripper represents our deepest fears. He embodies the unknown, the unseen terror that could be lurking around any corner. He is the boogeyman, the monster lurking in the shadows, the fear that grips us when we walk alone at night. He reminds us that no one is safe, that even in the heart of a bustling city, danger can be just a step away, and that sometimes evil triumphs. The Ripper's evasion of justice is a stark reminder of the world's inherent unpredictability. Whatever the reason, Jack the Ripper remains an enduring enigma. His story is a dark chapter in history that refuses to close. He is a ghost story that continues to haunt us, a tale that is retold with each new generation, each time with the same chilling effect, a reminder that some mysteries are never solved. And perhaps that is what keeps the legend of Jack the Ripper alive.